welcome back to the channel. I'm pre-filming some videos. <coughs> Hi lovelies, welcome back to the channel. I'm pre-filming some videos. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm pre-filming some videos for my 12 days of Christmas and this is going to be kind of an intro um, testing out my vegan makeup series. So if you don't know, uh, I am an ethical, environmental, and health vegan, and I've lost about 90 pounds since I went vegan about two years ago. Uh, well, it's almost 90 pounds. Um, and I am just so incredible, incredibly happy uh, since I made the switch. And if you want to know more about veganism, please let me know if you'd like to see that channel. If you want to know like what we eat in a day and how we save money on groceries and all the benefits of being vegan. Um, and just let me know. So I am a fat happy vegan, just so you know, but I also love makeup. Makeup is just an entirely, it's a hobby, it's a passion. Um, I think of it as like everyday art. And I think that it is something that is incredibly personal and incredibly, it's an outlet for artistry that maybe you're like me and you can't really draw and I'm not like I don't have a ton of like musical talent or anything like that so it's something that I wouldn't necessarily say is only for people who are artistic because I don't consider myself like a really artistic person but I know how to blend eyeshadow and so that's the thing that I'm most drawn to so if you are curious about cruelty free and vegan makeup that's what we're gonna talk about today, so let's get into it. And specifically, we're gonna talk about eyeshadow palettes. And I have been stalking Instagram accounts for the past three weeks to find indie brands that are, um, I'm trying to only include brands that are completely vegan and cruelty free, even though there are some brands that have vegan options. I would just like to showcase brands that are completely vegan and cruelty free so that you can order anything from their line without having to like stop and think about it like Anastasia Beverly Hills their dip brow and their brow whiz pencils are vegan but none of their palettes are because they use carmine if you don't know carmine is the pigment that comes from squishing a bunch of beetles together and like putting it into makeup so it's literally Beetlejuice on your face. And even if I wasn't vegan, like knowing that, I, I don't want literal Beetlejuice on my face. So if you didn't know, now you know. The more you know. Um, so if you're old like me, you'll get that. If you're not, don't, don't worry about it. So let's get into it. Um, I have everything here on my iPad. So this first palette is from OMFG Cosmetics and it is, it looks to be what's like a pastel palette and I like colorful eyeshadow. I don't think pastels are really my thing. That being said, I'm just not drawn to them, but I've never owned a pastel palette. Like I've never seen a pastel palette and been like, yes i must have this so i've never purchased one so maybe that's not fair because i haven't actually ever tried it um i haven't ever tried it on the eyes but in the pan it just you know it's pretty but to me it just reminds me of do you know those like those easter candies that are like you know the little pastel -y easter chocolate eggs or whatever like that's what it reminds me it reminds me of easter which is fine and fun but i just i don't feel drawn to those colors if that makes sense hold on had to take a water break um so yeah I'm just not drawn to pastel colors if you are great and if you've tried the you know uh anything from OM, OMFG cosmetics let me know in the comments down below because I'd love to hear what you think strobe cosmetics um which is a I really want their creepy cute palette I haven't purchased it yet and I I wanted so bad to buy it on Black Friday because it was like 25% off, but like a crazy person, I decided to go on a no buy for all of November, like just 
all of November. And I didn't, I didn't get it. So this is their divinity palette and all the shades are named after like goddesses throughout different mythologies. Like there's Aphrodite, but the shade I'm most drawn to in this palette is the Katesh. Okay. There's three, the Katesh, which is like the purpley, it looks like a purpley shimmer shade. It might be a satin, but it looks like a shimmer shade. Oshun, which is, uh, it looks like either a satin or a matte yellow and Milda, which looks like a matte kind of olivey green. I love those kinds of colors. And I just think that they're really like, even though I wear neutral looks sometimes, like I'm wearing just the naked palette today, but, um, I love, love that. And so here is the, oh my God, what's wrong? I just had like a vegan cupcake and I love vegan cupcakes from St. Cupcake here in Portland. And they're amazing. Um, we, a coworker and I today at lunchtime went to go get cupcakes and they had like 10 vegan cupcakes. And I was like, well, how, like, do you guys sell a lot of them? She goes, well, some days we sell, they're not like super popular because people don't really have them here. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to buy all of them. And I bought all the cupcakes, like, and then took them back to work and like back home. Um, and people tried them and they were like, oh my God, these are so good. And they were just, they were amazing. But I think it might've given me heartburn. So anyway, <laughs> total tangent. Uh, this is the Creepy Cute palette that I said from Strobe Cosmetics. Now I know what I just said about pastels, that I wasn't like into pastels. This is totally a pastel palette. But I feel like these are the kind of pastels that I would want. Like I want the gray and the green and the blues, like the two different blues. I just, I feel like these are the colors I want. Like I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like these are, if I was going to have a pastel palette, it would be this pastel palette, even though I've never tried it. Um, I did see Georgia Harris's review on it and um, I really trust her reviews because she seems like the kind of person, she obviously like knows what she's talking about, her eye looks are always on point um, and she really did like that palette and, and recommended it so I want that. This is a little bit different. This is from Lethal Cosmetics and you can buy, so like the palette, like the actual things the eyeshadows sit in, you can buy that separately and then you can buy both of these bundles or you can buy the two bundles in this picture. So like the eyeshadows, there's two bundles and the, um, the palette itself all for like $60. But let's just say you only wanted one bundle, like the one with the berries and the blue and the orange on the side here, you could just purchase that on their um, website or you could purchase the other, the other bundle or like I said, all of them together. Um, there are single shadows and you put them in this palette so you can arrange them however you want, which I think is really cool. Um, but I also just feel like, so this is, if you buy everything together, it's $60, which I feel like that is super pricey, um, for an eyeshadow palette. Um, that's like Huda Beauty prices and I get that this is from, this is a German company and so you're probably also going to have to pay a ton of taxes and shipping and stuff and I know people outside the U.S. are going to hate me but I don't want to pay that much for shipping. <laughs> I know you guys don't either so it's kind of terrible. Um, but there are companies in the States here, um, maybe the formula is really worth it. So if you've tried anything from Lethal Cosmetics and you just think I'm wrong and you're like, no, 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 this formula is amazing. You need to try it. Please let me know because I would like to kind of get some reviews. I want to wait and see about some reviews before I would like put my money on the line. This next one is like kind of, I'm kind of surprised that it was a controversial palette from Melt Cosmetics. It's called the Smoke Sessions Palette and it's a, it's a marijuana inspired palette. And like, I think even it comes like in the collection, there's um, like a, like a, like a marijuana pipe you can buy basically with Melt Cosmetics. And 
I heard Angelica Nyquist talking about it and like her response was like, I get it, you're so edgy. And you know, it's like, yes, I, I can see that. I can see how you would think that and like those kinds of vibes, but I just don't, I don't know, maybe it's from growing up in like California and growing up in um, like the, the West Coast. Like I just don't think that marijuana is really that edgy. Like, I don't think it's that, I don't know, I, I kind of don't care. Like, could I have done without the weed imprints in the pans? Like, yeah, I don't really, I don't think it adds anything to the actual product. Um, all it does is kind of brand the palette in a sort of way, like, it's this kind of person that would own it. And the truth is, like, I don't really partake in that and like I don't care if people do I mean I have in the past don't get me wrong I probably will in the future it's just not a like everyday part of my life right now um but for me it's more about the colors and these colors look amazing and I want this palette but Milk Cosmetics is so expensive I think this is like a 50 54 dollar palette something like that and they are a vegan company um, I know that their milk stacks are, you know, really nice too, but I probably like, I am a sucker for greens, but I feel like there's just too many golds and there's not, there's, I, to me, it's just like, there's not enough difference in the three golds on like the first part of the palette to really kind of make me want this. If they would sell like the the two greens and like the kind of icy blue as single shadows, I would pick those up. Like I, I would want those. So maybe Melt make some single shadows? Maybe? I don't know. Um, this one is from Viva La Diva in, there's a nude, nudie palette and a candy palette. I, I'm of the opinion that if you have a nude palette, you probably don't need another one it's probably all the same so like I have a naked palette and a naked heat and like I feel like that's pretty much all the warm tone eyeshadows I'm probably ever gonna need um but yeah so but let's just say you were new to makeup and you didn't have a nude palette I would say that you know again not ever having tried the formula not knowing whether or not it's powdery um i would say that i just feel like there's so many different colors of beige and i do have a problem when companies kind of assume that beige is nude like nude doesn't automatically mean beige because nude is only beige and like light browns for people with light skin tones so you could call this like a neutral colored palette, but it's not a nude palette. Um, and I, like I said, I just don't, I don't think the palette needed to be this big. I don't think there's enough differentiation in the nudie palette, in this nudie palette to really like make a difference. Um, I feel like you could probably have the last four shadows in the palette and it would work just as well. That's just my opinion. The candy palette though, um, I don't understand why in the candy palette they have like the, like a bunch of nudes, like a bunch, well not a bunch of nudes, a bunch of neutral like beige colors. They've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's eight like beige colors and then like six kind of colorful eyeshadows. I don't know why. So if you are a neutrals person and you don't like, you don't want to experiment with color, you would probably get the nudie palette here. If you're a neutral person who likes some pops of color, then it seems like the candy palette would be better. So if that's what you were going for, but I feel like most people who like makeup have those. <sighs> I don't know. I am really excited though that Strobe Cosmetics um, has some single shadows and um, these are here um, my favorite one of these 
is the azura, which is kind of like that, um, like Tahitian sort of blue color, like that, uh, that cyan color, and Enigma. So Enigma is like the one that's next to the yellow, that's like a more sort of um, kind of true blue color. And I'm really excited about these because I've heard that the Strobe Cosmetics formula is really, really good. And I'm kind of excited to, I, I want to try Single Shadows and I probably will be picking these up. Um, and that red, it's called World Eater. That looks pretty promising too. Like I'm kind of really excited about that. Um, and they're, they're just named so well. And that... I might not be able to resist that lime green coat. Oh my God, you guys, I'm talking myself into way too much makeup. So yeah, I'm excited for those. I am. But the thing I'm most excited for, and I'll put it up right here. This is the Christmas morning palette from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. And it has the most amazing green color. There's like a tan color called Milk and Cookies. But this red, like I would buy this red shimmer called Stocking Stuffers. I would buy that shade on its own for probably too many dollars. Um, but this entire palette and like it looks like oversized pans. Um, I can't really tell from the aspect, but it might just be like it's really close in. But it looks like oversized pans. Um, and I am just super excited for this palette. It is not out yet. It was supposed to be out Black Friday, but unfortunately uh, from their Instagram account, it looks like they were, um, it looks like they, their packaging hadn't come through yet and it's supposed to be out this week. And so I keep like checking and rechecking and like, when's it gonna come out? When's it gonna come out? Um, so I am really, really, really excited for that one. Um, this is, these are, uh, from Cleo Cosmetics. There's the Paleo and Archeo, um, palettes. These looks like were limited edition. And when I saw this, there were only 30% of stock remaining of the restock. Um, and these palettes were based on archeology span and paleontology, um, that's what the colors were based on and they look really beautiful and Angelica Nyquist uh, did the kind of uh, the look kind of the look books for them um, like the sometimes palettes will come with in like kind of instruction manuals on how to do certain looks and she did one for them so I'm super excited about that um, I don't think I'm gonna be picking up those palettes just because they are I think they're in like the 40 to $50 range, somewhere around there. And I, I, it's not that I don't think they're actually beautiful eyeshadows, I do. It's just that I, and I, there are some really unique colors in here, but because I have some other like palettes that kind of, they're probably not dupes for these shades, but they're similar enough that I just couldn't that I just couldn't justify the purchase of like what is basically a higher end palette for me um, for those very unique shades, especially because Cleona sells single shadows. So I would probably purchase single shadows before I would purchase that palette. Now that being said, if you don't have a huge makeup collection and they're still available, I've heard so many good reviews about those palettes that I would definitely, you know, I, I would pick them up if you could. Now, this palette is the Elf Mad for Matte Jewel Pop palette. I actually can speak to this because I own it and I have used it um, plenty of times and I really do like this palette. I'm usually not someone who does an all matte look. I did do one yesterday and I'll put it up here. So I did a green and a brown look and kind of smoked out the edges. Um, I don't think that this is, I don't think this is a bad palette. Is it the best palette I've ever used? No. It's also $10 though. 
So it's from e.l.f. and if you don't know e.l.f. is like a completely 100% vegan and cruelty free line. So it's a very affordable drugstore brand for those of us who don't use animal products. Um, I think they have a lot of good stuff. The one thing I would say is if you have sensitive skin, you might want to patch test the like um, Beauty Shield sunscreen and stuff like that. I had a weird reaction to it. Like it just kind of like I had this crazy red rash after like putting the sunscreen on everywhere. Um, I don't know if like my batch was just bad or if I had like an, a reaction to titanium dioxide, which I've never had before. Um, but it was, it was pretty strange, um, cause I've never had a bad reaction to any elf products before. The, the eyeshadow palette though, I don't have any complaints about. Now, are you going to get powder kick up in the pan? You definitely are. You're going to have to tap off your brush maybe a little. Um, you also are probably going to want to use a primer, uh, an eyeshadow base, whether it be like, um you know, a concealer, or I use the Urban Decay um, Potion Primer. That's my favorite one. Also, Angel Eyes is a vegan one. I got that in a BoxyCharm that worked really, really well. Um, it does have more of like a beige coloring to it. So if you have a darker skin tone, you might not want that one. Um, they, they may make it in like different colors, but I'm not exactly sure. So... I would say the best colors in this palette are going to be the orange and the orange, the blue, the two purples, and the green. Those are my favorite colors in this palette. I think those colors are like the most versatile that you... I love pops of jewel tone color though. So um, the other ones, you know, they are really good crease shades. They do, you know, they, they do their job. They warm up the crease. That's what they're supposed to do. My favorite thing to do though is to, you know, put the lighter brown in the crease and then put like the blue or the purple or the green on my lid and then tap on a shimmer shade from a different palette. I know some people don't like using more than one palette at a time. It doesn't bother me, but if it does bother you and you do like shimmer, then that's probably not the palette for you because it isn't on that palette. This one, I'm, it is another e.l.f. Um, another elf product it's called the opposites attract uh palette and i think this is supposed to be a dupe for the on the run palette from urban decay um i like when i first saw this i was like yeah i really want that and then i kept looking at it and i was like but why though like why do i want this and i still want it it's only like 14 dollars like that shouldn't be a reason you want a palette, like, but I kind of still want this and I don't understand why I still want it. So if someone can explain it to me, I would be very grateful <laughs> because I don't know why I want this palette. It doesn't really, I, I do like that it's set up in quads. Like there's a mustardy yellow color like with the happy witty warm and easy going like it's kind of set up in quads where you could use it that way but you can use pretty much all the shadows together and they kind of all work together at least the color story does to me anyway um the companion palette to that is the little black dress of eyeshadow palettes called the new classics according to them and it is a neutrals palette um it's got looks like it's got one two three four five six seven shimmers and probably it's like it looks like half shimmer half matte palette i don't hate this and now that i'm looking at it i kind of want it to <laughs> when i first saw it i was like no, I don't need another neutrals palette. Like I'm totally fine. I have like my naked palette and like, that's all I need. Um, I don't need anything else, but, but this kind of reminds me more of <coughs> this reminds me, it, it doesn't look like your ordinary warm tone shades. It looks like there's a few cool tones in here and some shimmers that look pretty promising. 
Um, so maybe if this is at Ulta, I'll swatch it. Um, I would like to, like, I would really like to. Um, Zuzu Lux is a brand that I would like to try in 2019, but not this palette. So this is called their Wanderlust palette. And I just think it's so boring. Like it's, that's like, I'm asleep. I'm, I'm bored. I'm bored already with it. And I just, it's a mauvey shade, a pinky shade, a champagne shade, and a matte black. Like, I just, why? Why, though? Like, if those are your colors, like, great. Pick it up. Like, but I just, I don't want it. However, OMFG Cosmetics had this um, really pretty Halloween palette. I think it sold out. But this is the kind of thing they usually, that they will do for Halloween. They had a matte black, a lime green, looks like a lime green satin, looks like an orange matte, a white matte, a purple matte, or a purple satin, looks like a pressed orange glitter, and like a yellowy sort of green um, satin, and it just looks really pretty. And I wish that I would have picked this up. But at the same time, I have an orange, a black, a white. Like, I, if I would have shopped my stash, the only thing I would have been missing would be that pressed orange glitter. And I don't really love pressed glitters in a palette because I feel like they're intended to work a certain way. And they just, for the average consumer, for someone like me, I'm not a makeup artist. I'm not like, I'm just not. And I feel like it's always a little bit more difficult to work with pressed glitters. So. They also, OMFG Cosmetics, had these really beautiful purple fake lashes, um, and I, I just, I still want these. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where I would wear them, but I still want them. Uh, again, OMFG Cosmetics has their Kush palette, and these are my colors. These are the purples, the greens, the darker greens, like the vibrant greens, and there's like a sparkly black though, and I just, I don't want sparkles in my black. Like, can we stop doing that? Like, can brands stop putting sparkles in the black? Like, I don't, nobody, nobody wants that. Everybody hates it. Please stop doing it. Don't do that anymore. Just, just stop. Just, just stop. So, if you are someone who enjoys luxury makeup and you are also having to be vegan, you might know about Inglot. Uh, this is the Jennifer Lopez collection with Inglot, and it is all kinds of beige. Like, I'm just, maybe I would like the bronzer, but I feel like it's just one, two, three, four, five. I feel like it's five shades of beige. Like, who asked, in the words of Angelica Nyquist, who asked for this? Why? Why is this happening? On the complete, complete opposite side of the spectrum, Menagerie Cosmetics, aka also known as Makeup Monsters, now Menagerie Cosmetics, has two palettes. Um, when they were still Makeup Monsters, they released the uh, Dragon Child palette, and that is the one on the left um, with the, with the, child sleeping with a dragon and then the feral palette is to the right of that and it's just these are two different color stories I feel like the dragon child is more for somebody who's maybe into uh, more cool tones and it seems like there's more of a variety of colors in the dragon child palette so I would lean more towards that um, I'm going to link Georgia Harris's review to both of these palettes down below because I think she did a really excellent job um, and just kind of doing a review and she actually used the palette so I didn't. Where I really agree with her in the Feral palette was the entire first row could have like gone like in the Feral palette. Like everybody has the pinky tone, the beige tone, the warm warm-up crease like 
pretty much everybody has that. Like maybe I could see keeping that dark tone and like maybe that like more cafe latte tone to like warm up the crease or whatever. But I really don't think that that first entire row needed to be there. Because if you're buying a colorful eyeshadow palette, like you're buying it for the colors. Um, and I get that brands want to make sure that you can, I, I kind of understand why brands do this. They want to make sure that when you are purchasing a palette, you feel like you're getting your money's worth and like it's, that that's the only thing that you'll need to do your makeup that day. Because most of us, what we do is we pull palettes, you know, for the day and then we do our makeup, you know, from that palette. Unless you're a crazy person like me <laughs> and you're pulling like two or three different palettes and like a single shadow and you're, you know, you're using, um, you know, cover effects drops for like your shimmer and you know, whatever else you're doing. But, um, I just think that it probably would be okay for when you have a colorful eyeshadow palette. I don't think most colorful eyeshadow lovers are going to especially if you're purchasing like from an indie brand you kind of already know you're not getting the mainstream sort of product so i think that's okay like i can understand why like elf for example would put in warm-up crease shades in their palette along with the jewel pop tones like i get that like half the palette is half that palette is neutral half of that palette is colorful so it makes sense because they're trying to appeal to a more mass market. If you're an indie brand, you kind of like have your own aesthetic and you kind of know that those people aren't really looking for mainstream. They're, that's not what they're looking for. Um, I hope that makes sense. But so yeah, I will link Georgia Harris's review to the Dragon Child and Feral palette down below. And that way you guys can uh, let me know what you are thinking of picking up, what you are absolutely not picking up, and let me know down below. Also, um, you might wanna take a look at these if there's a makeup lover in your life and you wanna, you know, maybe get them something really nice and or maybe you don't know what to get the vegan girlfriend in your, maybe you have a vegan girlfriend, you don't know what to get her, you get her any of these things. Um, and she would probably love them because most, uh, it, it is kind of hard to find vegan, good vegan skincare and makeup products and other things. And the indie brands are really leading that charge and leading the way. And so I'm really excited and happy that that is the case. Thank you so much lovelies for spending this time with me. I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you next time.